the flagship of funeral service. Since 1950, the name you've known to trust is Creole Funeral and Cremation. Under the leadership of the new owners, Mrs. Ushanda Thomas, her daughters Hydea and Lacandia, Mr. George Woody Funeral Director. This month, we pay homage to the patriots of 9-11. Policemen, firefighters, active duty personnel, and all veterans. Funeral with cremation package, a value of $4,100, now $3,150. Stop by and pay us a visit. Allow our family to take care of yours. My name is Stanley Butler, Director of Operations. We are Creole Funeral and Cremation, 1940 7th Avenue South, St. Petersburg, 33712. Email creolefandcremations at gmail.com. Or like us on Facebook at Experience the Difference. Telephone number 727-896-2602. Fax number is 727-821-9486. Let your last memory be a beautiful one. Our radio broadcast ministry today of Matters of the Heart with radio host personality Princess Denise Wright and my special guest today in the radio studio with me, Pro uh, Prophet Brian Anderson Sr., and Bishop Judy Rivers of today's New Revelation Ministry. Uh, to, uh, if you were listening to the first 30 minutes of our broadcast a few minutes ago before we went to commercial break, we were talking on our ministry message today, which is God Got You. And uh, if you heard that, I know you're ready to listen to part two of what we're going to bring to you today through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Uh, let's start with uh, Prophet Brian. Prophet Brian, what would you like to share with our audience today in case they're going through anything at this time? Um, the one thing I want to say, I will listen to your, your testimony. I love how God, he, he, he sometimes he has to crap testimony, which means that you have to go in the low place, the valley experience, Amen. the threshing floor in order for mm -hmm. God to do that. And I tell people all the time, um, the reason I had my, some cars of mine repossessed, somebody needed Brian to have that happen. Mm. The reason I've uh, missed out on opportunities for jobs, the reason that I've got conspired against, somebody needed Brian to mm. go through it for them. Okay. It has nothing to do with me. Amen. All right. I'm just a vessel. Not about you. Amen. <laughs> so it's not about me. And once I've learned that, I learned how to put a smile on my face, even in the midst of my tribulation, because mm -hmm. one of the fruits of spirit is long suffering. Yes. And people say, that don't sound good. I mm -hmm. said, but you know what? It feels good if you pay attention. Because blessings, it's blessings in that, long suffering. Because the only reason you have long suffering, we join us with Christ. We share his suffering and his glory. Yes. Yes. So you yes. have to suffer for the cross sake. Amen. Yes. There's no way around that. And um, for those going through something right now, um, if you're going through it right now and you just feel like, okay, they're going to repossess my car any day, they're going, I'm going to get evicted right now. Um, that light bill is staring at me Monday. Okay, maybe Monday come, lights go off. God, where were you at? I'm still right here. Uh-huh. You never uh -huh. prayed to me. Uh -huh. You complained to me. <laughs> you complained. You didn't pray. You didn't pray. You didn't pray to me. You complained to me. You never once said, Lord, can you help me with this light bill? Can you do something for me? Okay. Like I said in Isaiah, in Isaiah, though my angle's not turned away, my hand scratched out still. Yes, hallelujah. In spite of what you do, do to me, I'm still going to help you. Mm -hmm. So remember, mm -hmm. the difference between complaining and praying. Are you just complaining or are you praying to God? In humble submission. Amen. Yes, right, humble right. Humble submission. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, on your, yes. <laughs> on your knees, say, Lord, I'm, I don't know what I did, Lord. Please forgive me. Mm -hmm. Lord, I need your help right now. Mm -hmm. I'm ratchet. Mm -hmm. I'm two-timing. Mm -hmm. I have a diable spirit. I do all manner of things against you. I know I do these things. Lord, just forgive me and help me. Don't let my children suffer because of my disobedience. Please don't, Father. Mm -hmm. He hears prayers like that. Yes, he'll yes. Sin, he'll do something for you. Yes, yes. Yeah, he will. Oh, Absolutely, God. Prophet yeah. Brian. Yeah. I'm telling you. And you know, what I'm going to say, and then I'm going to, like, say, pass the mic on to uh, Bishop Judy, is this. Uh, we were talking to, uh, I was talking to uh, Prophet Brian uh, yesterday uh, when he called me. And uh, I was thinking about uh, some things we were talking about. I said, yeah, it's I deal with this uh, serious eye condition uh, that I have. I say, we know, and we all, we both said, yeah, it's not about me. It's, it's, it's why you're going through this. God is doing amazing things through your family where he's transforming them. Those that are lost and unsaved, they're getting saved. They're reaching out. They're talking about the Lord. 
they are talking about God. They're believing God is going to heal me, especially this little grandson of mine, uh, Jeffrey Parker, who's 10 years old, Pastor who's constantly, <laughs> Amen. constantly going around speaking that. the word of God. God told me to tell you to do this, Grandma. God said you're healed. God said this. And I said, look at God. It is nothing short of the blessings of God, what God is speaking into this little boy's spirit. Because he truly, God sent him from heaven to earth to be a part of our family. And it's just a blessing. And the things he's saying, no telling what's coming next, what's coming today, tomorrow when I see him as we're going to church. But I know God is speaking through this little boy. Uh, as I walk through this, as you say, as we walk through the uh, uh, shadow of death, through this valley, listen, God is with you. And I, and I just want to let you all know, too, no matter what you're going, to, going through, God is with you. God is not forsaking you. The only thing that happens is you forsaking God and throw him on the bike burner uh, and just say, and then you only, uh, if you go to the doctor and they give you some kind of diagnosis, just that's going to blow your mind whether they're saying it's terminal or whatever. And then that's when you may call on God. It's like, oh, God, help me. God, save me. God, I don't want to die. And then, you know, God may have not heard from you in 40 years, but you're calling on him then, help me, Lord. And what does he do? Just as sure as you start praying, he hasn't heard from you. You've not even called him on the main line in many years. He is still there to get you through whatever you're going through uh, by healing your body. If you had to have a surgery, whatever it was, and you receive the blessings of God because he does not throw his uh, children away uh, on the bike burner and just say, huh, stay there because you've been so disobedient. Uh, you, you, I haven't even heard from you, so I'm not going to worry about whether you have a home. I don't care about you not getting being able to pay your light bill. I'm, I don't care whether you don't have no food in your house to feed these six children or whatever. Not the God that we serve. That is not our God. So we thank God today for that God got us no matter what you are going through. I'm going to pass the mantle on over to Bishop Judy. Praise the Lord. It's been a glorious time we've had this morning. You know, we were starting out in Joshua 1, and uh, the one verse that you wanted me to share with the people is that God was going to be there with them, mm -hmm. and he was never going to forsake them. In Joshua 1 and 5, I believe we started out. But, you know, one of the verses, a couple of them that follow that, the next one says, be strong and of good courage you know and that's one that's that's my son's verse this is this is why this message was so powerful this morning uh to speak because we have gone through a little a blip this morning with my son and this was a verse that his father gave him before he died he said be strong and of good courage it's all, all, all also written in deuteronomy but the thing of this is is that once you get past this, be strong and of good courage. Mm -hmm. It goes on to say, only be thou strong in verse 7 and very courageous, okay, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law. If there is a failure in the process of whatever it is that you're trying to be strong and of good courage Amen. about, look at how you are obeying the law. The Bible says that the government is on his shoulder. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, that means that the people that are in charge, we have to honor them no matter how bad they are, no matter how Donald Trumpish they are, and how this and that and all the other bosses that are before you. You still have to honor those who are in authority. You have to honor parents that you hate, but they gave you life. Oh, Hallelujah. yes, yes, They yes. were purposed to give you life. Yes. And so when you do the will of the law, which is to love God first mm -hmm. and love your neighbor as yourself, then you, you don't have these problems. Things get to a point where you just don't really have to deal with all of the issues. If you're having to go through cycles of something, let me share this with you because this is where I'm observing some things. I'm counseling people who are going through cycles of something. They go right back to the same thing in 90 days, in 60 days, in 30 days. My son is having issues where he's going through stuff almost on a weekly basis. I'm saying, well, we're getting closer. We're getting closer to the mm -hmm. connection. Mm -hmm. Something is going right when it gets to that point where it's manifesting that fast that you got to go through this again. 
Mm-hmm. God is trying to take, just like the people, they, you're going around the mountain in the wilderness, 11 day journey, now it's 40 years. You got to go through, just like Brian was saying, prophet is on point. You got to go through this so that somebody can see where there has to be a difference. What's going wrong? What is it that you've got to go back to the law? of what mm-hmm. God says, mm-hmm. okay? I, I'm, I'm encouraged because after our prayer warriors just jumped on it this morning, I mean, they really jumped on it, glory be to God, it came to me that, okay, there's something missing in this ordeal that he had to go through this. And, and it occurred to me, well, yeah, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. What did he do this time? He picked up a knife. Stupid. You're dealing with God's property. Okay. You've got to handle yes. things in God's manner. And I'm saying, okay, when I talk to him this time, I will tell him this is what the Spirit of the Lord told me. You have got, you did good. You've been preaching. You've been teaching. You've been bringing people in. You've been trying to minister to them. But you're still working carnal weapons. So the next time, just stand. The Bible says Amen. put on Amen. the full armor of God yes. and stand yes. and yes. pray in your spirit language. <laughs> it tells us, okay, you, you you know you got all of this. I'm watching him get equipped. Every time he's going through all of these moments and episodes, and they, you know, they call it, uh, 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 I can't think of what the clinical word is. He's, he's getting uh, these moments or whatever the case it is. He is getting stronger in the Lord. He's preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh, you know, yes. I rode up on him a couple of weeks ago, and all I could see was this skateboard in the garage. You know, the, the garage was open about eight inches, and this skateboard going back and forth and yelling and screaming. About, well, he was on the skateboard preaching, just preaching. Amen. He said, i got to get this out, Mom. i got to get this out. And I'm going like, glory to God that you have that kind of control that now yes. you're turning something yes. that was a manic episode mm-hmm. into a Jesus moment. Hallelujah. Yes. 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 Lord to God. Okay, I'm through with that. I'm, I'm sorry. I <laughs> no more with that. But y'all just be encouraged that you do the will of the Lord in the process of you going through. Don't get discouraged. Don't start cussing people out or threatening them. Just use the weapons, okay, that God has given you. Prayer changes things. God got you. Yeah, God, God got, got you. you. He God says, you. the word of God says, I can do all things through Christ. Hallelujah. All who right. strengthens me. Yes. 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 Me. yes. And one of the things that you have to understand is, I, 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 I've dealt with this late, a lot lately, is uh-huh. that people question, when they, they want to come to me and question God. Mm-hmm. Well, how come God allowed this to happen? Mm-hmm. Yes. How come They're God, good at that. And they, mm-hmm. they say, well, and this, this is why I don't believe in God, because I said, hold on, hold on, let me, let me tell you something. Let me stop right now. I'm going to go to the word, let the word do the word. Hallelujah. Psalms 36. Mm-hmm. And the organ within my heart concerning the sinfulness of the wicked. Mm-hmm. There is no fear of God before his eyes. Mm-hmm. For in his own eyes, he flatters himself too much to detect or hate his sin. Mm-hmm. Now, it speaks of arrogance. People are sinful and wicked because they have no fear of God. Yes. The word of God says, the beginning of knowledge is the is fear it? of God. So the problem is what you're doing, you forsaken, you forsaken your knowledge, number one. You have no fear of God. So fear, you, you feel like it's, it's, I can do anything I want to do. Yeah. I got my free will. But then when I mess up, God needs to come clean this up a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then when you're done, I'm going to go back and do what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Reprobate mindset. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. So now, you're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah. God don't got you. In that state, he don't got you. No, don't added the word don't now. Okay, so he's gonna turn you over to Satan. Okay, see, this is this is what this gonna is what turn you over. over. And this, okay. this is the thing that gets me that, that really baffles my mind is that demons got enough sense, yes. Satan got enough sense to be fr- to tremble in the presence of the Lord. Yes, they got that much sense, mm-hmm. and they sit back. And I wish, I wish sometimes Satan just would appear and said, You're so stupid. Go ahead, keep go ahead and keep denouncing God. Go mm-hmm. ahead, keep denouncing the Lord. Please go ahead. I'm a, I'm a, and God gonna take you all one I'm a, I wish you just show up this show. So go ahead with with, with this new thing just you got going. Just keep it up. Just keep it up. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah go ahead. Moving. Yeah. Keep it moving. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't eat. Yeah. Just go ahead and do all these other things. The word what the word says in latter times some would abandon the faith and take up doctrine taught mm-hmm. by demons. Mm-hmm. That's happening right now. Mm-hmm. Anything but God. Mm-hmm. Because I need something that's going to let me still sniff the cocaine. I need something to let me still homonger. Mm-hmm. I need something to let me still be treacherous mm-hmm. and ratchet. That way I don't have to feel convicted. Mm-hmm. So I got to find something. Oh, there we go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where God says they want them to tell them fables and stories instead of the truth because mm-hmm. that truth was cutting them like a two edged yeah. sword. Mm-hmm. They wanted fables. Yeah. And what did he do? 
he sought the, the advice of his friends instead of the elders. He mm-hmm. forsake the elders. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what's happening now. There you go. But see, we serve a God who told Joshua, I will never leave you. I Don't never forsake, forsake you. you. Yeah. Yes. He got yes. you. He got you. So if you truly ice God, say, Lord, help me. Watch what money does. Mm-hmm. You waiting you waiting to come home, your lights off. You come home, your lights on. Mm-hmm. And you somebody, said, I can't so, believe somebody, it. What somebody, happened? Somebody paid me bill. No, nobody paid your bill. They just didn't get a chance to get out. Because somehow in the paperwork, it got moved. Yeah. Okay. So now, so now God <laughs> got brought some time. All of a sudden, <laughs> you get this refund check you've been looking yeah. So now you got time. See, what's that what God does? Yes. See, he, he'll, he'll, he'll buy you some time. Yes, yes. So for those who listen right now, you're going through. Now, I dare you, try God. Don't tr- read, read the word. It's in the word. It's 66 books that help you through anything. Now I'm done. Mm-hmm. Amen. You, Praise God. And you know what? I thank you for that, uh, Prophet Brian. Because um, as he's tell, t- telling you about everyday life, the, the things that we deal with right here, you're thinking like these things happen to you. And don't realize uh, even people back in biblical time, they had stuff going on. Oh, yes, they did. Yeah, they may not have the uh, modern thing of the electricity and uh, water coming through a pipe and stuff like that. Had to go to the river or the lake or whatever like that. But they went through stuff. They went through stuff, too. They went through things like adultery, the other woman, uh, homosexuality. Things, all kind of stuff. People just uh, uh, just abusing them like slaves. Just like we know of with African Americans of what uh, the era that we went through with slavery mm-hmm. and the the way that we were treated and stuff. They they went through like they were slaves too to the king to do whatever they were do the dirty work and and you don't get no pay at all and you barely get any food. But you had to do what you had to do if you wanted to survive. Or be murdered as you was going to. So when we look back on some of our other biblical characters, just like uh, comes to mind is Samson, who was the biblical Hercules, was told he was a, a, a Nazarite, and uh, he was told uh, as a young boy, your your strength is in your hair. Do not cut your hair. And what does he do? gets uh seduced mm-hmm. by delilah mm-hmm. okay and what do they do uh put him in prison and brand uh what is it what were we called branded those eyes where took out his eyesight could no longer see and there he was all strapped down and and uh uh, uh secure by those who had charge of him but in the end, mm-hmm. what did he do? Mm-hmm. He prayed to his God. Yes, he did. Give me the strength one more time, Lord, mm-hmm. to do Amen. what I need to do. Mm-hmm. Got between those pillars, <laughs> they all got destroyed, including him. Amen. But what he did, what he needed to do, because God get, uh, strengthened him. He get, you know, he did not forget about him, even though he defied, but he and he had to be surrendered. To the persecution that he went through, but for the lust of a woman, and that's what happened. But listen, just like you now, you be maybe lusting on some things that you should not be doing. But if you pray to God, God deliver me, set me free. I got to get myself together. I don't pray that many times. Lord, I got to get myself together, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I got myself together, and God put me back on the straight and narrow pathway so that I could minister to girls. Uh, what it is to live single with your spiritual husband, okay? <laughs> to live single with your spiritual husband, who is the Lord, okay? Yeah. And things like that. So when we think about um, uh, Samson, and we think about, oh, Lord, my brother Job. Yeah, our brother so Job sure. with unwavering yes, faith. Yeah. Unwavering yeah. faith. Yeah. Yeah. You none of you could imagine this day if you lost your child, how you would get through that. You you know you can't get through it without the help of the Lord. But praise God if if you're saved and filled with the Holy Spirit, He will strengthen you. But God forsake, can you imagine losing seven children in one day? I don't think so. 
You can it's unbearable to lose your children, to lose all your servants, to lose all your livestock, to lose everything in one day, but he still had his wife, okay? <laughs> but he lost all that in one day. And through that period of suffering and things that went up about with the swords and this and friends sitting there, I, if I was you, I would denounce this God. Listen, look at you. Look at this mess you in. And you calling on God? Where is God? You sure? Who are you praying to? You believe in this God? And look at the mess you in right now. Give up on this God. But what did God do? Brought him in, brought him out, brought him through, and blessed him double for your trouble. Mm -hmm. Judy, what you got to say well, before we close out? You know, out? the one thing about Job, you know, when you go into the last few verses, 38, I think, through 40, it tells you that God did not change his situation until he began to pray for his friends. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, he was going through all of this, and he knew <laughs> he was going through all of this, and the friends were debating back, and this. well, maybe you did this, and maybe you did that. But it Something you did to bring yes, this on yourself. <laughs> yes, but God did not change that and turn that around until Job started praying for his, pr for his friends. And so this shows you that perseverance through prayer gains something he got back double for his trouble he got back double everything everything and he was a very rich man to begin with but gay, god really increased him after all of this and this was something else that i needed to point out too and 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 even though you're in suffering i've seen some people uh prophetess tina is one of them i can think of i, I can remember this girl was so sick she was dying and everything she had gone through like 29 39 procedures i don't know heart failing everything was going through but she was laying prostrate on her bed praying for someone in Atlanta to go through some surgery. I think it was actually she's praying for the doctor that he could heal whoever it was that was because he called upon her and said, look, I got a difficult case here. Come on, glory to God. I'm telling you. And, and, and so when we start praying, when we start praying, it changes not only the course of that person's woes, yes. but it changes the amount of troubles. And also Brian said this, prophet said, prophet said this, he said that don't expect that you would not suffer in this life. This life is for suffering. The Bible says that Jesus said in 16, I think John 16, 33, that I have overcome the world. I've overcome this kind of suffering. But the thing is, is that so goes the king. So goes the kingdom. If we are Amen. part of his Amen. kingdom, Say if it. the king suffer through some stuff, we ain't got no time. you ain't got you. You can't get excused from suffering. The class has to happen. I'm sorry, but when it happens, it's going to be up to God. It's God's will. It's perfect timing, right, princess? You always yes. say that God's perfect timing. That's right. Yeah, you know that's my you favorite gotta line. Through something. And God's perfect Praise timing. Praise God. I done gone you through. gonna come I'm through. Telling that's you. right. I, and let me tell you, no one. <laughs> if you ever think, and I remember having a conversation with one person one time in my life that said I never suffered from I've had a good life I've never really saw I can't remember and I'm going like oh sister it's coming okay that's all I could think just in my head living. I didn't just say keep it to living. her just and keep do living. you know I don't think it was within <laughs> six months that woman was in the hospital mm -hmm. okay we're coming up on our time now we're getting ready to wind down a little bit and I'm gonna make one quick announcement here before we close out today um <clears throat> I just want to tell my radio audience today, listen, 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 listen attentively. November the 10th, 2018, Matters of the Heart Radio Ministry is getting ready to host our 11th annual Thanksgiving Turkey Giveaway and Health Awareness event. Saturday, November 10th, 2018, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Pinellas Technical College located at 901 34th Street South in St. Petersburg, Florida. What Princess Denise is looking for today is someone to call me who wants to partner with me. Any ministry, any business, any organization, any individual, any church ministry, anyone, anyone that has uh, a heart for God that wants to uh, support other ministries in their endeavors to host our 11th annual humanitarian event uh, to bless 500 or more people with turkeys or a gift card to buy a turkey. <clears throat> and we're going to be uh, uh, also providing for you uh, a delicious, delectable Thanksgiving dinner. So please call me 
at your earliest time, even today. Write down this number, 17. Now, we're going to have other uh, future commercial promotion of this event. You'll hear more about it in the days and weeks to come. But right now, today, write down my number, 727 488 8818. I want you to call me if you want to be a sponsor or a donor of turkeys or grocery, or grocery store gift cards to help me bless these families. We're not registering at this time. Registration will not open until uh, November the 1st for families to call us. So this is not calling me in advance to sign up, but call me if you like to uh, be uh, a sponsor or donor of the event to help us bless these families that are in need in our in the Tampa Bay area. Again, matters of the heart, Thanksgiving turkey giveaway and health and wellness event. If you want to be a vendor, you can set up a vendor booth. Cost is is twenty five dollars. Okay, if you want to be a volunteer, call us at seven two seven eight two four seven nine zero nine. If you want to be a vendor, 727-824-7909. So give me a call today, and we would appreciate it. You'll hear more about this in the days and weeks to come. That's it today. We thank you for tuning in today to Matters of the Heart Radio Ministry Broadcast with my special guest today, Bishop Judy Rivers of Today's New Revelation and Prophet Brian Anderson Sr. Uh, what's the church that you have? Uh, the uh, ministry that my, you have? My ministry is uh, Secret Tabernacle Deliverance Ministry. Secret Praise Tabernacle God. Deliverance Ministry. Amen. You got it. Thank you, my brother.